Welcome, citizens, to Liberty Tales from the Tower. As your media director, it is my privilege to inform you that the following stories may contain content some listeners will certainly find disturbing. Tonight we return to the nights of the mining release lockdown over 15 years ago. Dear citizens, many of us know of great pieces of art, poetry, or music crafted during these, these days of solitude. Why, my favorite is the short work by Citizen Concordia McLean. Create the rail from metal forged in darkest mine and blinding fire. For we as citizens are charged protectors of what we so desire. Uh, well, you know how it goes. But before we here at AB3 bring you the continuing tale, a quick message from this episode's sponsors. We have the solution. The future is bright. The Department of Internal Affairs Division of Education and Prosecution has formatted and executed another sweeping success for Atreus. The current five accelerated childhood education academies, known as the Decima Acceleration Academies, are already producing the required and expected results. New DAAs are now on track to open next month in Districts 4, 8, and 10. Do not interfere with the relocation process. Do not interfere with the education enforcers. Bid any young citizen you see with a DAA agent a fond farewell. The future of Atreus lies with them. It sounds as though you have recovered, Aurelia. Recovered? From your cough. Ah, yes. I am in perfect health now. Please send your children to the academies. Well, the current DAAs are fully enrolled, as far as I know. And I thought children were selected for the DAA based on their test scores. More can benefit from the academies. We will send more. Right. Well, it is nice to have you back in the studio, Aurelia. Now, we continue with part three of the four-part series by our own in-tower archivist, K.A. Stats. So, gather around the table yet again and prepare for the next delve into minds and mysteries. Day three. Hey. Mm. Morning. Did you make caffeine? I did. It makes me hungry, but I think I should be less irritable with it. I'll be hungry regardless. You are up earlier than usual. Could not stay up later to scroll through the intranet, so yeah, I guess I am up early. Rolled over on my hand in my sleep and woke myself up. Does it still hurt? With pressure, yes. Otherwise it's just sore. I try not to move it too much. Why are you up so early? It's not so early anymore. But I had trouble sleeping and woke up hungry. That sadly will not change. Not today. Hmm. We still can't find the meal? Any of it? Uh, apparently not. The internet is still out too. Sorry, I cannot figure out what is wrong. The hub looks to be working fine, but it has no incoming signal. I checked it last night before heading to sleep. Sorry. No need to apologize. We are going to hear a lot more of that today and tomorrow. Well, the hollow table still works, and everything for the Minds and Mysteries game runs on local storage, so we can still play. We just need to distract ourselves. I know it can be really difficult to ignore an empty stomach. But we're all hungry, and we can all try to distract each other. Facing fringers in the caves beneath the city may be our best course of action. Ugh, just distract me from my stomach. No enthusiasm this morning, Hilaria? Mm, so hungry. Agreed. Oh, wow. That headbutt to the table really left you with a mark, Hill. Also, sorry if we were rude last night, Albina. I know you wouldn't hide meal, I just got caught up in my head. In my stomach. You were rude, but I accept your apology. 
We all need to give each other a little leeway right now. Cece is still asleep? They are never the last up. And Blantis is never the first. These are definitely odd times. Hmm, no meal at all? None? How about a sweet packet? With no food in your stomach? It will make you throw up. Throw up what? There's nothing left in me. <sighs> it is a bit early for everyone to be awake. We all had some trouble sleeping. I can understand that. <sighs> so, game? Sure. Mm-hmm. Yes, please. I will get it set up. <clears throat> Someone please bring over the caffeine. Does, uh, ooh, does everyone remember where we left off yesterday? We had reached the first fork in the cave tunnels. One was rather mundane looking, the other was very small. So, the team has reached the split. Either path will take you away from the last light of Atrian civilization, still barely visible in the distance of the cave. What are you looking to do? I check for the path again. Looking for traces of the people who passed by here. Which way did they go? Investigation check. You can see the dirt in front of the narrow path pushed into a line, as though someone squeezed past into the narrow space. Upon closer inspection, you notice striations in the rock on one side of the narrow path. The larger tunnel looks undisturbed. High roll. We should get moving. Traps. But we should check the narrow tunnel for traps. That sounds like a job for Specialist Woolroth. I agree. All right. Avio moves towards the smaller tunnel and begins to move inward. Along the way, she checks for traps and further indications of movement. Stealth and investigations checks. And that is why Avio is a specialist. Specialist Woolrith slides into the narrow rocks, her eyes scanning for traces of past travelers and traces of danger. She continues to find indicators of recent activity, slides in the dirt, metallic scratches on the narrow walls, and even the ring from a meal canister. As she begins to feel the tunnel opening up, she also notices something else. A slight shine in the night vision display of her privacy hood. Metal, where metal should not be, lodged up in the crevice of a rock. I stop, quickly. What does it look like upon closer but careful investigation? With the previous roll, Specialist Woolrith sees that the metal is, in fact, a gas grenade, and tied to it is a metal wire running down the wall, through the tracks, and across the narrow width of the tunnel. A trip wire. Rudimentary. Barbaric. Fringer. I can attempt to disarm the gas trap. I have a breather. I put on the breather and roll a sleight of hand to cut the wire, thus disabling the trap from being sprung. How many sets of footprints have we seen? One moment, Blandis. Specialist Woolrith snips the wire, and the gas grenade now sits primed but untethered in the rocky niche. It is safer if we leave it alone and do not try to remove it. So, I can see the end of the tunnel? Yes, a few meters ahead. Though... Sea is an odd word for it, as beyond is the truly darkest place you have ever encountered. I go to the end, checking along the way for anything else, but once I know we can safely make it, I backtrack and return to the others. I explain the position of the gas grenade and tell them to follow me. I will lead. I think Linus and Dr. Fall should be in the middle, with Officer Nona on the back end. Is everyone all right with that? Sure. Works for me. <sighs> yes. The team lines up and takes their time to pass through the narrow tunnel, led by Specialist Woolrith. Due to her precautions, the team passes by the trap without incident and makes it to the other side. The dark awaiting you does not strike you as odd all at once, but then you realize even the night vision is darker than usual. Whoa. Neat. Love the lighting integration. That was perfect. You are outside the reaches of the city, to the point where the last of the artificial illumination you have seen since birth has faded away. Where you are now belongs only to those who choose to dig down this far, to leave civilization far above and far away. And, uh, I guess 
Put on your actual privacy hoods lights for this section. Spooky. Yeah. Oh, if the lights are going to be off, I will need more caffeine. Can you pour me some? Thanks. So, we look for the path, I guess? Agreed. Roll for investigation. Who? Anyone who wants to. With a generally high collective score, the team is able to locate the trail. The small passage had opened up into a larger tunnel running perpendicular. You are able to determine that the most recent evidence of movement heads to the left, but there are more footprints now, as more people seem to have been waiting here for whomever came through the tunnel. Is there any indication of a struggle? No, it appeared to be an uneventful meeting. Possibly an escort. If it really was Seneca with the data, or someone going to meet with him, they would have sent someone. For now, we need to continue on. Cautiously. We know there are Fringers down here, and we might be headed in their direction. Either way, we are still further away from reaching the stolen schematics than either of the more devious parties. Very true. So we continue on, watching our step. The team begins- Oh! And I am making a map of the way we came in, so we can get back out. Glad you said that now, and not later. The team begins down the tunnel, and within half an hour, the tunnels have opened up into tall caverns where heavy steps echo. But something else echoes too. In the distance, you see flickering shadows cast upon a wall of rock and hear low voices. Why do we have to stay out here so much longer than they've got? Fringers! He's not the one paying for time, so no worry. Look, we stand here, we get meal. Easy as all that. Yeah, fine. Still boiling sleep. Like, what's out here? Rocks. More rocks. We just gotta wait for back in the game to get back. Trade deals take time. We need to get past them before these others get back. I wonder if there's a way around. Max, can I stand, or, or I guess, investigate from afar the cavern's interior? Are there offshoot tunnels? Does it look like there's a way to bypass the fringers? There are several smaller tunnels that break off from the larger cavern. It is possible that one of the tunnels near where the fringers are waiting could meet back up with the cavern further down the path. I relay this. I say we just fight them. As the only character who can likely survive combat, I thought you might say that. We still want some level of secrecy, at least for now, so we should try to go around, and if we cannot, then we'll fight. <sighs> Fine. Sounds like a plan. Lead on, Specialist Woolroth. I do. She does? <laughs> Whichever. We go to the smaller side tunnel, quietly. You are able to reach the tunnel without detection. The fringers are loud and careless, their own noise masking your movements. As you reach the tunnel, you can also see there are three of them now, not two, as one of them is sitting against the cave wall, picking at its nails. Specialist Woolrith leads you down the smaller tunnel, which bends in the direction you would need. This might just work. The tunnel widens up slightly, and the team can walk in pairs. There are patterns in the rocks above you that reflect in the night vision, Streaks of glistening silver that remind you of motion sculptures on rooftop gardens. Can we reach it? The cave is too tall for easy access. I would like to inspect it from below. Is it something valuable? Do you have a skill for this? Uh, roll for it. Uh, unmodified intelligence check since this is beyond my normal occupational knowledge? Specialist Woolrith has no idea what it is. But the team is distracted by the natural formations of the cave, even as they continue onward. Now everyone give me a dexterity save. <sighs> not again. See, fighting would have been easier. I am not even proficient in this. We can do this. <sighs> or not. Oh, I knew it. Of course. The team is trapped. The shine of the ceiling distracted each member of the team long enough for them to pass deeper into the cave, when, suddenly, a heavy metal wall rises from the ground behind you. The pressure plate rests under Specialist Woolworth's foot. Officer Nona, in the back of the group, attempts to grab the rising wall, but it seals before she can get close enough. Ahead of you, 
The team can see that the path only continues for a few more meters before the cave rounds to an end. Strength check. On the door, now. Officer Nona uses all her considerable strength in an attempt to rip down the door, but she is unable to move the metal wall. Okay. Everyone, look around. Quickly, for, um, like a, like a panel or a loose rock. Uh, something like a failsafe switch or door controls. Investigation checks. As the team begins their search, they also begin to smell something. A smell that children are taught in school before a trip to the mines. A foul smell added to dangerous natural gases to give away their presence in case of a leak. Gas? They're trying to kill us in here. Or knock us out. We have no idea if anyone knows we are here. I set off the trap. No one else sprung it. So... Odds are, this gas is meant to kill. This is a skills challenge, so I need everyone to think of their proficiencies and come up with some ideas. First is Linus. Oh, okay. So I know some of us have breathers, I do not. So I want to smell around for the most powerful scent, try to find the source, maybe block it up with something. Uh, I think that would be investigation. Success. Linus is able to identify a section of the cavern wall with multiple small holes drilled through it. The gas is being pumped in from the other side of the wall. Next, Nona. In a small space like this, uh, I am not sure what to do. I, uh... Help Linus with the holes if you can. He did not get around to stopping them up during his turn. Yes, I do that. I use just strength to force smaller rocks into the holes. (laughs) Just push those tiny pebbles in there and stare angrily at the wall. Success. Officer Nona begins picking up smaller rocks from the cave floor, forcing them into the drilled holes in an attempt to slow the gas. It works, but there are just too many holes for this to be a permanent solution. Next, Specialist Woolrith. I move to the pressure plate on the ground and begin taking it apart. With it apart, I hope Dr. Fall can make use of the technology to find us the way out of here. I would like to use sleight of hand to deftly take apart the trap. Success. Avio, using her tools and skill set, unscrews the pieces of the plate as quickly as she can. Wires run beneath the plate, and it does indeed look like this is set on a circuit. Dr. Fall, it's your turn. Yes, so now that we know there is some kind of circuitry telling the door to go up, it might be possible to make it go down. I rush over to the exposed wiring in the floor of the cave and use technology to roll open the door. (laughs) Failure. Even though the pressure plate was able to control the door's rise, it does not seem to be able to signal the door to drop. Linus, it is your turn again. Right, so we cannot seem to block up most of these holes. Though it is slowing the gas down, it will not stop. Can I use perception to determine the type of gas? Like, is it possible to determine how much time we have? Give it a try. Right. Failure. Linus sniffs around and tastes the air, trying to pick up anything about the gas, but can determine nothing. This is not something he has ever trained for. Does anyone hear that? What? I thought you were playing an audio file. The hissing? I thought it was in the privacy hood. No, it's coming from the door. The door seal is leaking. The lockdown gases are getting in. Utility tape, do you have any? Under the sink. Did it work? I think so. Is it really that pressurized out there? I am so sorry. We passed the pre-lockdown tower inspection. This never should have happened. It should just be the pressurized clean air, but I'd rather take precautions. No worries. Mistakes happen. Lockdown inspection was a few weeks ago. Nothing stopped the seal from breaking between then and now. True. The problem is solved. Utility tape has a myriad of uses. Well, thank you. Now, where were we? Linus had failed his check. Now it's Officer Nona's turn. Uh, I have no idea what Nona can do in here. Can you please just do my turn later? You want to hold your turn until the end of the round? Yes, that. I want to do that. Then next is Specialist Woolrith. So, Avio, 
Um, are there any places in the ceiling of the cave that may lead out? If there is a switch, it may be outside the section we are in. Rolling perception to find a hard-to-reach escape. Success. Yes. Above the team, perhaps four meters off the ground, is a small fissure in the rocks over the door. It is almost imperceptible, certainly so to anyone not specifically examining the ceiling with night vision. It will take some skill to get you up and through such a small passage. Okay, I tell the others. I know what to do. I toss a VO up to the fissure. Athletics. <laughs> Success. Oh, okay. Up I go. Officer Nona sees the area indicated to her by Specialist Woolrath. In a swift motion, Nona links her hands together and places them beneath the raised foot of Specialist Woolrath, launching the small acrobat into the air. Avio gets a rough grip on the fissure and is able to crawl inside. It is clear this is not an exit for everyone, as the crack in the rock is so small, even Avio has a tough time wriggling through. But I do? You do, and you land on the opposite side of the door. Now, Dr. Fall. Well, there must be some kind of way to open the door from that side, so I yell to Avio, asking her to locate some kind of panel or switch... I tell her to look for a, a difference in the door to indicate where the lines are, or something like that. I... Uh, I am just making this up. I have no idea what the other side of the door looks like. <laughs> Can I just be encouraging? With persuasion or something? Of course. Give it a roll. Success! With a final, encouraging, and somewhat informative word from Dr. Fall, Specialist Woolworth is able to locate a small switch near the base of the door, causing it to slowly fall back to the floor. Nona barrels out of there. I hate being trapped. Do we think it was a fringer trap? Rather advanced for them. No, I think this was built by Dr. Moran's goons a few years ago. We must be on the right path. The Fringers might have been a redirection from the cave, to send us to the trap, assuming any A-train would avoid contact with them. So we need to go through the Fringers we saw. Now that is what I want to hear. Let's kick some Fringers! <laughs> yes, let's get kicking! <laughs> <What? laughs> None of you were keeping watch. Before you in the cave, you see the three Fringers you had attempted to avoid in the tunnels. Attracted by the team's talking, the filthy but stealthy trio snuck into the shadows of the cave. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I need to catch my breath. Just, that printer gave me a fright. Agreed, those breathing sounds were intense. I didn't think about them until, well, once it spoke. Laria, are you okay? No. Yes, I mean, ever since I injured my eardrum three years ago, I have a little indicator light in my privacy hood for when it is making noise. I guess I just missed it. We tried to get around them, but we're going to have to fight. I think I have a shock baton? Yes, shock baton, with an incapacitate ability. Everyone, roll your initiative. So, I need to ask you all something. Hmm? Is something wrong? Well, I keep feeling as though some things have been happening. Max, did you turn on that breathing audio? I was prepping the Fringer details for a fight, so I think the program just started running it since it keeps up to date with where we are in the module. I did not select it to run, I think it just happened. But I heard it. My privacy hood did not indicate that it was playing. It indicates everything else, but not that. Maybe it was a glitch? Either way, it was a fun addition. Is something else bothering you, Hilaria? Yes. <sighs> but... I think we should just play for now. If you want to talk about something, we can always take a break. No, not yet. We'll break later to study anyways. So, Max, let's fight. So, it appears that the first character to attack is Specialist Woolrith. The Hollow Table shows you the character modules for the team and the NPCs, as well as the terrain for the combat zone. You are still in the narrower tunnel to the side of the larger cavern that the Fringers came from. You can see that here. 
The three fringers stare down at you, each one holding a light source of some kind. The first holds a scrap gun with a light attachment, the glare from the muddied light shining on his yellowed teeth and dirt-streaked cheeks. The second has a torn privacy hood wrapped around his neck, the light feature shining on the metallic thread of a now-outdated model of hood. It, and the rest of his clothes, have splashes of dark, dried liquid, and you wonder if the hood was salvaged or is some sinister trophy. The final man, smallest in stature, holds out a fiery torch in one hand, the blinding flame helping to conceal the heavy weapon he has in the other. Go ahead, Albina. We go first? I thought they would have gotten a surprise round. These fringers do not see you as that much of a threat. They find it more fun to toy with Adrians than to just kill them quickly. Encouraging? Okay. I have a... Oh, wow. Okay. A garrot wire. So I need to get behind them. I use my celerity ability to quickly dodge under the group, reaching the area behind them within four meters. At this level, that takes my whole turn, and they can roll a dexterity save to attempt to halt my movement. Avio dashed beneath the legs of the first fringer, around the second, and under the third, popping up behind the suddenly confused group. Next is the first of the fringers, we'll call Seven, who uses an extra action skill. In front of Seven is Officer Nona, so he slashes forward, attempting to injure Nona with the blade attached to the front of his poorly constructed firearm. The fringer misses. His blade moved to meet its target, but Officer Nona dodged to the side at the last moment. Officer Nona, you're up. I grab for the gun to disarm him and injure his arm or ribs. This is my specialized reckless grapple attack, so I think it already adds in the bonus to the roll. Oh, yes. Thank grief. See, this is what Nona is built for. Bit of a strong attack to use so early. No, no. We need to win this. With a critically successful roll, Officer Nona grapples the rusty gun from the Fringer's hand, grabbing his wrist and yanking him forward to the ground. You cause a significant 10 damage, and the Fringer is grappled and prone. Next up are the Fringers, Seven, Forge, and Ringer. Seven attempts to break free from the grapple. Wait, again? Oh yeah, next reaction. And fails. I- me, you idiot! There are still the others. Next is Forge. He lifts up his weapon and swings for Specialist Woolrith, who popped up behind him. He misses the agile Woolrith by one point, swinging over her head and into the cave wall. <laughs> Stop moving around, tiny scrapping any. Come here. Fight me like a boss. Next is Ringer who pulls out a frighteningly modern-looking shock baton, not unlike the one Dr. Fall has. He switches on the baton and sends it swinging down on the preoccupied Officer Nona. (laughs) With a very slim margin, the shock baton connects and injures- No, it does not. He's next to me and attacking an ally within eight feet of me, so I use my quick thinking interrupt steel to add a deflection bonus to Officer Nona's defense. That bonus causes the attack to fail. Reeve, thank you, CC. <laughs> of course. We innies stick together. What? You any think all your press weapons stay in the wall? Ha! Ah, we got it all out in our fringe. Just you wait. At the last moment, as the glowing shock baton races toward Officer Nona, Dr. Fall, quick of mind, dashes forward and swings their shock baton upward to deflect the incoming attack. The two batons spark upon collision, lighting up the cave in a flare of raining blue sparks. Wow. Hmm. With the attack deflected, we move on to Linus. Combat is not my strength, but I know Cece still gets a turn, so Linus... Watching the sparks fly in the small cave, Linus turns to Dr. Fall and grins. Now that is how we do it in Atreus! And I give Dr. Fall a plus D6 bonus on their next attack. Now that is how you play Charisma. Now, Cece, what does Dr. Fall have in mind? Shock baton attack on the fringer that attacked Nona. Simple, direct, with Linus's added bonus. With a smack of the shock baton, the fringer's free arm goes limp and numb. He has taken... Seven damage. 
and has the limb incapacitation, non-permanent status affliction. Neat. So, back to Specialist Woolworth. We need to get out of here safely and quickly. This is going to get ugly. They're fringers. It's already ugly. Yes. So, Avio makes her garrot attack using the flanking bonus. Breathe. Well, should we just assume that the fringer is dead? Well, yes, I think. Yes. The data says yes. Oh, worked well then. So, yeah. One down. The speed of Specialist Woolworth is not to be underestimated. As the Fringer, Forge, turns to watch the explosion of blue sparks, the Vio wastes no time in wrapping the thin wire around his neck. In a quick and almost instant motion, the Fringer's eyes go from raging to empty, and Avio removes the wire from his neck, letting the body fall to the cave floor. Forge! Binny scrap! I'll tear you apart! Next is Officer Nona, still grappling Seven, the Fringer, on the ground. What'd you do to Forge? Help me! I already inflicted some serious damage last time, so I, uh, attack the Fringer in the grapple. I think you have a sustained grapple ability, which would cause damage and potentially knock him out. That, then. Yes, here. Nona lifts the grappled Fringer off the ground and quickly dashes him against the rock wall of the cave. He goes limp in an instant, though she is unsure if he is dead. Seven! Have you done messed up, Innes? We're just waiting for the boss. Boss will mess you up! Ringer turns on his heels to face Blandis, looking for the least armed of the atrium group. He lifts the baton for a swing, the arc of blue light illuminating the cave. But he was engaged with Dr. Fall, so he should have a penalty, right? Yes, right. So? Am I dead? I am dead now, right? Please do not kill me. I just built Linus. By a single point, the baton rushes down towards Linus, and in the narrow confines of that dark cave, the baton misses. Oh, I was so worried. The baton makes contact with a jutting piece of rock from the wall, stopping the swing mere centimeters above Linus's head. Linus, thankfully unscathed by the attempted attack, is up next. Okay, so the only weapons I really have, since I'm not firearm proficient, is a collapsible baton of the non-shot variety. So I draw the baton and swing up at his jaw. Give it a roll. Yes. Is that enough? Does it hit? An upward swing connects, and you feel the sound of cracking teeth ripple through the cave. Upsetting, but victorious. The damage you inflicted was enough to knock him out or kill him. It is up to Linus. We should just kill them, right? If they wake up and tell others, they will know we are here. We cannot take any chances. Seems like he's going to die, Max. Then he is dead. (laughs) Combat has concluded. With the bodies on the floor, and the growing smell of blood, you all remember that these fringers were waiting on others, and you have no time to waste in researching your goal. You hear a sound, a growl, and hear your stomachs as the adrenaline dies off. Each of you must make an endurance check, having not rested since leaving the surface. You must also eat a meal each or make a starvation check. A bit too topical, eh, Max? Sorry, it is just the game mechanics. Give me those endurance rolls and take off four meal, one for each member of the team. That's the meal, I think. We gave that guy way too much as a bribe. This roll has my added bonus from earlier in it as well. Those were some slim successes, but each of you endures the long, hard working hours of the module so far. Can we take a break? I have this really stressed out feeling. Maybe it's the hungry or the dark, but I really want to take a break. Can we just study? Yeah, I feel really strange too. Wired. Of course. This is a fine place to pause. Can we get the lights back on? Sure. I just need to... Is the connection still on? 
It should be. I am trying the program, but the lights aren't responding. The panel isn't responding either. Try the program one more time. I can always reset the lights if we need it. You might have to. I still have no response from the interface. What about the window opacity? If you do make them transparent again, at least we can have the natural light. I can try. Nothing. It just says systems connected, and the immersion settings are stuck in the on position. Someone just get a light on. Is the power out? And I know that it is not because the holodeck is still on, so just ignore that question. Did someone just move? No. No? Not me. Still in my chair. I heard footsteps. They weren't in my hood. Get the lights on. I'm resetting it now. Do you have any emergency lights? Lantern? Battery lights? An emergency lantern under the sink and a battery lamp in the bedroom. I will get them. Keep working on the lights and the windows. I keep hearing someone. Like... breathing? Yeah. Me too. Here. Lights. What was that? What? What happened? It was just a shadow. Something moved! Where did it go? It was just the shadows moving when the lanterns came on. It was just the lights. No, it was something. The breathing is gone too. Breathing? I th- thought I saw something. Well, at least we have the lamps. I reset the light and window controls, and now I have less response from the panel than earlier. No offense meant, Albina, but I am really starting to hate your apartment. You know what, Blandus? Me too. It has never been this problematic before. Okay, so we have no food, no intranet access, and no lights. Can we open the door yet? Is this a lockdown emergency yet? Lockdown ends tomorrow. We can make it to then, with what we have. We don't know if the air is safe yet. There may still be trace chemicals. What do you think, Max? I have my concerns, but I don't think it's safe to open the door yet. It's safer to wait out the lockdown. I think I need to take a nap. Ugh, same. Not having anything to eat is tiring me out. Excuse me for a moment. Does anyone mind if I take the lantern to the bathroom? Take it, and leave it in there. I want to shower before my nap. Are you okay, Hilaria? No. What's wrong? I hit my head. Does it still hurt? No. So what's bothering you? Landis cut his hand on the meal tin. The meal is gone. The lights went out. The door leaked. I know it might be considered cheating, Max, but maybe you could just tell me. Are there other fringers in the caves? Yes. Why? I can still hear breathing. Thank you for listening to the Liberty Podcast. If you would like early access to episodes and bonus content, join fellow citizens on our Fool and Scholar Patreon at patreon.com slash foolandscholar. This episode of Tales from the Tower was written by K.A. Stats, co-created and produced with sound design by Travis Vengroff, with dialogue editing and additional sound design by Marissa Ewing. Minds and Mysteries stars Frankie Larson, Travis Vengroff, Cole Burkhart, Christy Luce, Jordan Cobb, and Peter Lewis. Minds and Mysteries features additional voices by K.A. Stats, Naomi McMillan, Lindsay Graham, Aethor Vitherson, Ryan Philbrook, Graham Roy, Lindsay Zana, and Daniel Demerin. The music for this season of Tales from the Tower was written by Brandon Boone, and episodes were mixed by Marissa Ewing of Hemlock Creek Productions. This production is copyrighted 2021 by Fool and Scholar Productions, and Liberty is a trademark of Travis Vengrov. Thank you for listening. Hope that the Archon watches over you.
Send your children to the academies. Surrender your children to the education enforcers.